Today we're going to talk about structure, measured moves, and pre-planning your best trade setups. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, middle of the week. A couple of big days uh, yesterday, a really big day for a few of the pairs. Today we're going to go and review structure and measured moves and we're going to talk about a couple of examples of yesterday. We've talked about the Friday, Monday, Tuesday, the, the setting of the high and the low for the week and how that can often give us some insight into a bigger structure that could give us some measured moves. Some traders have asked questions about using the FIB tool and what I do and I just erase the numbers on there. We'll demonstrate that. Uh, I just use 100% expansions of the range. But coming back to just a simple approach to the market each and every day and one of the things that I talk about doing is narrowing each day, playing a little game with myself, narrowing the six pairs down to two or three what I consider to be in my best analysis on the day to the, the three best candidates for the trade setups just prior to that 12 candle window. So you know I'm looking for the pairs that potentially have established a clear and easy to see high and low interday high and low between the 25 pit boxes maybe 50 pit boxes between the round numbers and that way based on the bigger structure based on what's happened the previous day, the highs and lows, if we've taken out a previous day's high and low, if the market was in a trend, you know, higher closes, again I talk about the market hitting the previous day's higher low as a good indication and also attracting other time frame traders into the market and then developing a thesis. So I write down my levels for those three pairs and I'll often do it maybe for all six just to see what's happening as the session unfolds if there's a clear and obvious maybe setup right off the start but generally speaking I'll look at the levels above and below where that consolidation has occurred and again depending on where the previous session or the previous day's levels are that can give us some insight depending on which area that range expands towards so we might get a break to the high and a break to the low but generally speaking I'm looking at the 25 pip boxes outside of that range now if we're trading around a number that sometimes can be a bit easier to see because the numbers are closer to the Asian consolidation unless of course they've stretched it out but towards the end of that Asian session we will still be at some point inside of a 25 pip box or around the numbers so again depending if they've already put a peak formation in place that should give us some, some insight if we're breaking through into another box for a pullback continuation or if we're getting a consolidation that is purely just hitting the highs or lows and if so are there number levels there if the market was to extend down and work a level or up and work a level for a trade setup back perhaps to the other side of the Asian range and again this is for you to develop a bit of a feel and expertise each day to see how well your analysis plays out so each hour I'll just check those at the end of the hour to see how that's evolving but my three main candidates for my best trade setups I may already be in a trade but I always review all six to see how they've traded out throughout the session and throughout the day if it's the previous day to establish how well that they respected that general approach and process towards the beginning of each session. So again it's always about just sharpening those skills each day and this is a really simple little exercise but so it allows you to just come to the screen each day for whatever instrument you know develop, obviously identify your best candidates but then just develop the expertise because you're getting the opportunity to see six pairs or more if you want to go study other pairs to speed up your learning to accelerate your progress and then obviously identifying where the trades may have taken place how did that play out did they play did they trade off of a number over that three hour session and give a pin hammer or an engulfment with a pin up top or was there a consolidation that was just trading in a range bound market and again just about accelerating your learning and getting that little bit of progress each and every day. So pre-planning your best trade setups 
working backwards, I, we keep talking about that. It's identifying that bigger structure. I like to target something that's got some structure and the easiest way to do that is using the previous day's highs and lows because we're either working up towards a bigger uh, peak formation or a lower peak formation or we're trading inside of a horizontal consolidation over a few days you know Monday Tuesday Wednesday up high or maybe a Friday Monday Tuesday down low like we saw yesterday those are the opportunities that when they do set up and you've and you've prepared for them you're expecting to see you know a three push pattern with a consolidation and a pin hammer or you're expecting to see three pushes to a high uh, an engulfment and a pin hammer for the move back towards the low or the high uh, of the session. So just again pushing progress and getting a little bit better but uh, developing that expertise about working backwards and in, in how you'll perform in live time so that you can recognize that. We talk about using the clock, we talk about using those 25 pip boxes. That's the easiest things to be able to identify. We know that we're going to get a high and a low in that three hour Asian session we may get extended out, we may extend it out into the beginning of Europe, but we're going to probably be at numbers 25 to 50 pips above that consolidation. And then we have other, obviously other factors. Are we in a trending market? Have we been making higher highs or lower lows? Are we, have we taken out the previous day's high or low? Are we up high for the week and it's Thursday, Friday? Do we have any news coming out? Is there a catalyst that could, that could have this accelerate in a blow-off or a continuation. Just little things again that we want to be factoring in each day so that we're prepared for it. High and low of the structure, so measured moves. We're going to show some examples of yesterday, but if we have a bigger structure and the market is trading inside of it or even during the day, if the market works down lower, takes out the high, work, takes out the low, but works the low, that peak formation on either side if we're going down or if we're going up that again now starts to be our target for where if the market trades up to this level we could see it do a full expansion and in a stronger move two full expansions of that range from the peak of the beginning of the session or the the, the, the peak formation on the bottom from the beginning of the session those measured moves allow us to target, in a lot of cases, more than 50 pip movements. A lot of cases, they, they may be working off of numbers, but that larger geometrical structure from the high to the low will often be at least one full expansion towards that measured move. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, we'll show some examples on the screen. The high and the low of the day, that's our initial way to, to assess the market, if they, especially if they're sideways. But as the market expands its range, we can expect to see either a sell high setup or a buy low setup after they start to expand the range and hit the stops. And again, most of those will be at round numbers unless they're working into numbers at the low of the day or, or the high of the day. But typically, most stop hunts will be 25 and in a strong moving market they'll do 50 pips and often we'll see a 50 pip stop hunt to the high or to the low of the week. Pins and timing. So we'll look at some examples of how the market makers, the smart money, whatever we want to call them, will flip the book. One of the easiest ways to recognize if we're in a trend or if we're in a reversal, if we're in a reversal often what we'll see is we'll see pins on top and the market may trade down and all of a sudden you're going to start to see pins on the bottom and then the market comes back up and you might see pins on the inside and all of a sudden the pins will flip to the top side for a move back down but when you start seeing these pins on top at numbers at the high of the day expect to see some selling especially if there's an engulfment and a pin hammer if we start to see that switch as we head at the low of the day either into the next uh, session or if we've taken out a low of the day or a low of the week whatever that may be and all of a sudden we start seeing pins on the bottom you can expect probably that we're gonna see a move back up so those pins are a really good indication of where the market makers smart money again selling up top and all of a sudden later you see them flip the book and they're buying on the bottom for the reversal back up 
if it's a trend trade, we'll often see the pushes. So we may get a breakout and traders are looking for the, for the stop hunt back against the trend, but the market is working back up into the breakout level for the measured move down. So you'll often see the push is going into the trend or into the trend if it's an up move for the continuation as opposed to seeing the pushes extend down for the reversal back in the other direction. And again the opposite if it was a sell off seeing the, the pushes push up into peak formations for a sell off as opposed to pushing down into a trend for the continuation. And timings. 90% of the time we're going to see this set up in the 12 candle window. We may get a trade right off the bat in the 12 candle window. Sometimes they take that three hours to set that structure up so we could get three pushes down over three hours for a move up or we could get three pushes up for the move down and sometimes if the market in Asia has already extended up into a peak we may see that sell off or, or buy right in that first hour and then the London candle can often be a stop hunt as we saw yesterday. So again, structure and measured moves allow us to target greater than 50 pips. We'll look at some examples. But pre-planning your best trade setups. Each day going to the screen and, and having that thesis and then writing out what your thoughts are for each pair, 25 to 50 pips. If you're expecting the market to go up and they hit the high first, are you expecting them to uh, work into the low of the day or extend that move down 25. You know, just different scenarios and then monitor how well you're seeing that play out in live time as the clock starts to move around in that three hour rotation. Start to look for where those best trade setups may be. Pin hammers, engulfments. Is it a trend trade or is it a false break reversal? So hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders. Push yourself just keep pushing yourself to keep getting that little bit better each day in terms of recognizing what's happening, how they're setting it up. If you're not seeing something set up and it doesn't look right, don't trade it. And then monitoring how you're seeing that play out in live time. Keep it simple. Keep getting better. Have a great trading session and may the markets go with you. Good day traders. Stacy Burke continuing our discussion on structure, measured moves, and planning for your best trade setups. So we're just looking at uh, the pound yen from the last couple of days. Uh, we talked about structure a bit previously on the weekend, but looking at Friday, Monday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, sometimes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But looking at the bigger structure for the geometry that can set up over a few days for that measured move type of situation. And we'll just talk about that measured move scenario in a minute. So we have a high and a low on Thursday, Friday. The market uh, traded in a quiet range because of the American holiday. But Monday morning, we broke out of that range from Friday's high, but still inside of Thursday's high and Friday's low. The market went up with three pushes over the course of the three, th three sessions before trading back down on top of Friday's session. So we talk about the three things that markets do. They break out and they pull back and they fill more orders and they trend. They break out, they pull back and reverse. We call that a false break reversal. And we're looking at, at an example of that as well. And they break out and they pull back and they go into a trading range, which is essentially what we saw on Friday. So the market uh, broke out on Thursday, pulled back, and then Friday largely was a trading range. So when we talk about identifying our, our best trade setups, you know, we just talked about that and establishing a thesis each session based on the 25 pip box or the 50 pip box that the Asian consolidation trades within. And so we may have thought that the market may stop on up top or down low. We don't know what they're going to do, but when they come out and do it, at least we have a plan. And the market moved up on Monday before selling off and then pushing three pushes up into the U.S. session for again selling down on top of Friday's session. No follow through. Thought maybe we would retest Friday's low, but we didn't. And so as we head into Monday, Tuesday, now we have a larger structure high and we have the low of Friday, but the market has traded back inside of Friday's range and we thought possibly we'd see a follow through 
to the low of that rectangle, maybe for a move on the downside. Uh, but again, that market popped up in Asia and hit the low of the day twice, which was the top of Friday's high, before pulling back up and then stop hunting down in that Europe-London open. But again, we failed to follow through to that lower 25 pip box increment and the market stayed on top of Friday's session high before hitting the high one more time and then pulling back and inside of that consolidation giving us our shortened W. So we have our pin hammer again on our third push we have our pin hammer and the market just tighten this up again now this this market could trade to the high or the high of Monday and that may be it but we also have now a thesis that you know coming to the screen prepared we can look at this and say well we've got a high of the day if this market does break through our initial um, measured move area or inflection point whatever we want to call it we can use a measured distance of this break through the high so targeting Two times that expansion would take us somewhere up in the 3490 area. But now we also have larger geometry from, from Monday, which we can look at. We'll just set that up to see what that looks like. And again, we would use the high and the low of that uh, Friday, Monday. And that takes us up towards that 3535 area where we can see the market uh, failed. But we also have the bigger structure as well from Thursday's high, that low that Friday broke out of and pulled back. So Thursday's high and Thursday's low technically is that larger box. And that could still see us possibly heading up towards that 3560 area if that market was to continue to trend. Now, again, I like to use the Monday, Tuesday as my target, this market, if it was to follow through up through there, though, could still extend out and get up towards that 3600 or that 3560 area. So just looking at this, this Fibonacci tool, all I've done is change my numbers in the Fib extension tool to 100% expansions. Uh, again, that's just an easy way for me to, you can do it mathematically if you want. But most importantly, it just gives me a measuring tool for structure to target uh, the measured distance if this market was to break out and move, which for one full expansion, we've hit that. And we also had the smaller geometry to trade for the measured move from the pin hammer to the high of the day, which it did obviously four full expansions to hit that. Uh, and that was a fantastic move. But again, Monday, Tuesday often tend to be in a large percentage of the, the case, the higher the low of the week. So a fantastic opportunity to identify when we can see structure. The market failed to go lower, but it broke out and pulled back, consolidating in three pushes before popping up and then hitting into that with the Europe London Open, jamming in a third time, consolidating pin hammer for the move through the high. And again, just looking at our 25 pip boxes, the market was working the high and then stop hunted back into the box. And that consolidation that Asia was in initially was, was right at the top of that 25 pip box of the Friday session. So if we just take a look at the pound New Zealand, slightly different example. Uh, we had the market, we'll back this right up. We had the peak formation. I'll just reset this. So that we've got the uh, session for the Friday, Monday. Oh, hold on here. Show our Monday. So Monday is the pink line. We had a peak formation that set in on Wednesday. The market worked its way down from there. So we had Thursday, Friday, Monday, three days down. Each day taking out the previous day's low. And then... On Monday, we see one push, two pushes, three pushes into the low, a 33 type setup. And then yesterday morning, Tuesday morning, we get the peak formation in that Asian 12 candle window. And again, we see the market go one, two, three sideways, 
engulfment and pin hammer at the open of the second hour, the Asian market. And we can draw our initial high of the day because now we have a measured distance that we can target as a as a measuring tool for a full expansion if the market was to trade through there uh, as it has. As we come to our Europe 12 candle window, the market was clearly in a breakout continuation. And the market obviously did exceed that uh, measured move. But we come back and we now incorporate Monday, Monday, Tuesday as our initial balance. And the market has not quite made a full extension of that range. But if we use Monday's range, the market is still potentially targeting that 92.25, 92.20 area if we were to get a full expansion of that range. So the measured distance of that structure, just looking for a full expansion, it's already um, gone past the 50% of that range. So possibly we'll still see that targeting that upper 92.20 area as a profit target. But more uh, just coming back to our initial assessment, you can see the Asian consolidation was in a 25 pip box and it dropped down, taking out the low of the week to the lower 25 pip box, going sideways with an engulfment and a pin hammer. As it broke through the high of the day, pulling back, we see an engulfment again at the 12 candle Europe London open window for a breakout pullback. The pin hammer formed our new peak formation at the last candle of the first hour. And then the London hour, first candle down, second candle pin hammer for the continuation of the trend trade. So again, traders, just and you'll notice it came off of numbers. So the stop hunt came down to the numbers. The market reversed on the second candle of the second hour. So just in terms of that hourly phenomenon, you've got one hour breaking out, one hour candle closing high, and then a breakout pullback for a continuation of that trending market. And these are great examples to screenshot and study because these are the same types of setups you will see again in the future in a trending market. But our larger geometrical structure still has not been hit and it's possible we could see that market stop hunt down low, possibly to that 91, uh, sorry, 9150 area or even to the low of the Asian swing low, somewhere in there for a continuation up towards that measured move distance. So. If the market doesn't do that, it may hit the high for a, for a move down towards the low of the day. We could get a peak formation in place, but we'll know as the market trades and sets up for us in that Europe session. Hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Measured moves, using bigger structure for measured moves, just targeting 100% expansions of those geometrical ranges, patterns within patterns, and also looking at the pins for when the market makers flip the book and the market starts to move in the other way. You'll notice we didn't see any pins on top until we saw that pullback, consolidation, pullback in the U.S. session, and then the continuation. 25 pips are our normal stop hunt. And in an exceptional, uh, usually the high and low of the week, if there are 50 pips aside from the high and low, we can see the 50 pip stop hunts. So stay disciplined, traders. Stay focused. Keep it simple. Have a great trading session. And may the market Hi, go traders, with you. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.